Eternal Father, we are grateful that we are one of Israel for, for peculiar, distinct gifts of interpreting the Holy Scriptures and dispensing the mysteries of grace to the edification of the church. Thank you for impartation of life by the authority of your word. Thank you for watching over your word to fulfill it. Thank you, Father. Even now, we welcome these great angels to fulfill, to fulfill thy word in our life. Holy Spirit, now is your hour. Glorify Jesus. I declare the blood of Jesus to unblock the fountain of our soul. Let the the blood of Jesus unblock the fountain of our spirit. Amen. The power in the blood of Jesus unblock the fountain of our life. Amen. That even now, the glory of spring forth. The presence, the glory, and the power of his majesty bring forth Amen. in every life present here. In Jesus' name. Blessings be imparted, Amen. and all glory be unto the Lord. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, and everyone says, Amen. let's consider this and read this passage, verse again, Psalm 31, verse 21. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Somebody say marvelous kindness. Marvelous kindness. Who is that God is revealing, fulfilling his marvelous kindness upon you. If you are the one, say yes. yes. A strong city. I want us to read it in another translation for clarity. The voice. Look up and read the voice. Bless the eternal, for he has revealed his gracious love to me when I was trapped like a city under siege. One more time, somebody read it out. Bless the eternal, for he has revealed his gracious love to me when I was trapped like a city under siege. When I was trapped, my life was like a city, it, like, my life was like a city trapped under a siege. But the Lord showed me his marvelous kindness. Amen. Based on this, the title of today's prophetic message is Siege Breaking Faith Praise. Siege Breaking Praise. Siege Breaking Praise. There is kind of praise that will spring forth in the life of somebody here today that every siege will disappear. Somebody say, Siege Break and praise. Oh Lord, those who understand that the, your destiny cannot be trapped, you will declare that out loud. Say, siege, break and praise. Siege, break and praise. Listen, it's not until you start singing. By your declaration, it is already happening. Amen. That's the power of praise. Somebody say, siege, break and praise. Siege, break and praise. Say, the anointing is upon me <laughs> to praise the Lord. To rejoice in the Lord and to destroy the siege. Somebody say, siege breaking praise. Oh, you better shout it loud. You better double that aggression. Look at somebody eye to eye and say, receive the grace. Receive the strength for a siege breaking praise. Oh, turn to somebody who understands you better. And tell the person, receive the grace. Receive the, Receive the unction. Receive the strength the for a siege breaking praise. Break praise. Turn to somebody who understands you better. Because in the mouth of true witnesses, the truth will be established. Say, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. be strengthened in your inner man. 
be empowered by the Holy Spirit for a siege breaking place. Be strengthened in your inner man. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit for a siege breaking place. A siege breaking place. A siege breaking place. You receive that, say yes. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus, I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'm strengthening my inner man. I receive the grace for a siege breaking place. A siege breaking place. A siege, siege breaking. Break it, break it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your voice and let's read the first translation one more time. Bless the eternal, for he has revealed his gracious love to me when I was trapped in a city on the sea. Let's consider New English translation for clarity. Lift up your head and read. The Lord deserves praise, for he demonstrated his amazing faithfulness to me when I was besieged by enemies, O oh Lord. Whose testimony is this this morning? Oh Lord, help us. Leke paroso mayoska. Read it again out loud. The Lord deserves praise for he demonstrated his amazing faithfulness to me when I was besieged by enemies. Besieged by enemies. My life was as though I was trapped. There was no going forward, no going back. There was no way I can turn to. And the enemy thought we, we, we got him. But in the midst of that despondency, the Lord demonstrated his amazing faithfulness, saying, I will rescue you. In a strong city, what was stronger than me? In a besieged city, your life cannot be trapped. Somebody shout, siege breaking praise. Shout loud. Say it believing. If you want to see it, you may see, but the blessing has begun already. If you hear what the psalmist said about this in the previous verse, when he was in the sea, besieged in the city, actually he, his life was more of a siege life. From the moment he discovered his purpose in his life. The siege began. Surrounded by multiple army to destroy him. Say, let's see how you will fulfill this calling. The moment the Lord showcased him before people, the moment he killed the giant to save his people from reproach, the moment the coming forth of David to kill Goliath was not just killing the giant to rescue the people, but Remember, through him, the lineage of Messiah came. Amen. The rage against him was that the revelation, presentation of David before the people was to say, here comes the route by which Messiah shall come. Because the description of the weight, the height, and the size, and the weapons of Goliath is a sign of satanism. Some days we will go into that later. How the Lord start, Bible started describing his, his weight and everything. It was a symbol of satanism. To cause dreadfulness and intense rage that no one can confront until the Messiah came. So the stepping forth of David was more of messianic appearance. That in any way the devil has been raging against your life. Jesus will arise to confront him for you. No wonder he fulfilled the scripture, the seed of the woman shall bruise his head. The stone he released was not just a stone. You go ask, go, no, you can't ask him because he's in hell anyway. If Goliath will speak from hell, even though we don't want to hear the voices of hell, hallelujah. But from the mind of Goliath, even though we don't want to hear the mind of hell, but one thing about him that signified Goliath was... The stone that appeared was a rock. The moment David released the, the, the stone, a huge rock, unshaken, eternal rock appeared. Why would 
Goliath be, would just become like a zombie. He, he couldn't dodge it. The rock, where will you hide when the eternal rock of ages appeared? Yeah. Of anyone that collides with him shall be broken to pieces. Yeah. If he decides to collide on anyone, shall be granted to power. Somebody say, resurrected Jesus the rock. Yeah. Oh, you better shout his name again. Yeah. Resurrected Jesus the rock. I magnify your name in my life. Lift up your voice and magnify him. Hey, is that the best way to magnify him? Resurrected Jesus the rock. 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 I magnify your name over this gathering. In Jesus' name. Somebody better learn how to seriously magnify his name. The rock appeared and crushed him, bruised his head, preparing for the coming of Messiah, that the seed of the woman shall bruise his head. The moment David showed up, all hell break loose. Everywhere in his house, they besiege him. In the field, they besiege him. In the forest, in the desert, they besiege him. In the cave, they besiege him. So his life was more of a besieging, being surrounded by, by chosen army to destroy his life. But in all, he said, when I was besieged, he said, I was afraid. Naturally, you would. I panicked. I was terrified. What are those things that you making you that is terrifying you, making you afraid? Thinking you can't escape. Back to the voice translation, please. He said, let's read it together. Bless the eternal, for he has revealed his gracious love to me when I was trapped like a city under siege. This will explain many people's life. Many people's life can be described like a city under siege. A city under siege, being surrounded by military forces, whether in the natural or in the spiritual. There is a rage of chosen demonic old and host assigned against people from the moment of conception throughout the time in the mother's womb to the time of birth and they are growing up. This, they have been surrounded, compelled to surrender. And when you talk about siege, the purpose of a siege, in those days when a city is surrounded by an, an army, in order to force them to surrender, they will cut off the essential supplies, block the water entering, block every means, and try to isolate that city from hell. Someone say, isolate from hell. Someone say, isolate from hell. Somebody say, cut off. So when a city is besieged, it's a prolonged persistence attack. Someone say prolonged persistent attack. Oh, let's say it really well. A prolonged persistent attack. And they will be releasing a projectile weapon. Re re releasing projectile weapons in order to break down the city defenses, pacification, just to make them surrender. Could do that for years just to ensure they surrender. But David said, This explained my life. Always encompassed. At one point, he said, They encompassed me, they encompassed me. But in the name of the Lord, I shall destroy them. They encompassed me as. They encompassed me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They encompassed me as bees, like a fire of tongues, in the name of the Lord. I shall destroy them. Somebody say, every encompassing attacker. Oh, Lord. Those who want to be free from siege and want to step into greatness, this is your hour. Receive the strength for a praise declaration, siege-breaking declaration. Somebody say, every encompassing attacker against my life. If I were you, I will really double the aggression. Oh, Lord. Encompassing attack against my life. Let God arise and scatter them asunder. Scatter, scatter them asunder. 
In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus rebuke and condemn encompassing attack against my life. In the name of Jesus, encompassing attackers of my life shall not prosper. Let God arise, scatter, shatter, scatter, shatter, scatter, shatter, scatter, shatter, scatter, shatter. Every encompassing attacker with their weapons against me, the blood of Jesus rebuke and condemn you. In the name of Jesus, encompassing attackers against my life, let God arise and scatter them asunder now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Look up and read, say, Bless the eternal, for he has revealed his gracious love to me. Has God revealed gracious love to you, somebody? Yes. Maybe you don't know what it meant to be in siege. He said, When I was strapped like a city under siege, God revealed his gracious love. It's amazing kindness. It's marvelous kindness. Meaning, for somebody to encompass you around, for what? Encompass people around. It's an indication that nowhere to turn to. That's why some people say, anywhere I turn to, war, strife, misunderstanding, one thing or the other happening, it's like I'm encompassed. But in the midst of this, God can reveal his marvelous kindness to you. Okay, let me put it right. I'm not getting it. God has revealed his marvelous kindness to me to scatter the siege. That is why my life cannot be trapped. For a siege to happen to any life, and the psalmist said, this is how my life is. And this explains people's life. Like a city under siege. Surrounded by reinforcement of darkness anywhere, networking of evil. But somebody say they shall not prosper. Shall not prosper. Somebody say every siege attack against me, the blood of Jesus rebuke, <laughs> condemn you, and scatter you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody say the Lord most high has shown me his marvelous kindness. The Lord most high. Has shown me his marvelous kindness. And that is why your life cannot be seen. The purpose of siege is to cut off help. Cut off helpers. If any good thing is coming to such a city, they cut it off. They leave them alone until they dry up and force them to surrender. If any good thing is about to enter into the city, they cut it off. And say, you cannot enter. The purpose is to isolate from help, from any good thing. Does that not explain some people's life? If in the midst of friends and relatives, you feel isolated. You feel you are struggling it alone. Because nobody really understands the in-depth of your strugglings. Has there been many occasions where you feel this Good things should have happened. I've done everything possible, but it's not happening. Could it be that the siege has cut off the flow of essential things in your life? That's what siege does to people. Somebody say, it shall not prosper. It shall not prosper. If somebody is living a life, anytime you are expecting something, it's like you are waiting forever. If there are signs as though it's coming, you saw it coming, but it never happened. It's a siege. Why? It's just like the city could see the help coming, the good supply coming. But the people who set a siege around them, we go and fight them. And suddenly the city that have been looking at that thing coming towards them, suddenly it disappeared. Where did it turn to? Why can't it come in? Couldn't come in. It was a siege. Have you been living a life that people will just make promises, but the help is never forthcoming. It's a siege. When you are believing that this good thing ought to have come, it's like it's so rare and difficult. One has to really struggle so hard for any, to experience any good thing. It's a siege. 
But the psalmist said, in the midst of this siege, God can reveal his marvelous kindness unto you. I was trapped like a city under siege. But God showed up. He said, I have seen your life. How many times you have been encompassed, surrounded, surrounded, and they are cutting off good things coming from you. But today, the Lord is revealing his marvelous kindness. The Lord is revealing his marvelous kindness. The psalmist, he said, I, ter I was terrified. I panicked. I was in fear. I was so much dreadfully afraid. Is this how life will be forever? Why am I so trapped and nothing, there is no flow of good things into my life? Why not? I meet with good people. It's not that I don't know them or I don't meet with them, but they can't connect with me to release the blessing. They will rather do good to others than to remember do good to me. Each. You, know, you have the connection. You know what to do. You know where to turn to. But why, why, is, why, are those, why is it that those things are not flowing? Why are people not connecting to, flow, to release the flow of blessing to your life? There is something cutting it off. It's a siege. Somebody say, I prevail over that siege. And I begin to wonder if there is a siege and somebody has been so encompassed, cutting the help, cutting up every good thing coming. I began to wonder, the Holy Spirit sat me down and began to say, if human will be so smart in a gulf, you want to go to a place and there is a gulf, a deep, a great deep between you and the thing. And you can't get across. If human being would be so smart, someone says smart, smart, to construct a bridge. Oh Lord, help us here. How much more Jehovah the Most High? Yeah. You can see bridge linking town to town, village to village, city to city. Things I could, it would be hard for me to go down the deep. That would be risky for my life to go down. With the help of the bridge, I can cross and look down on what will have swallowed me. Glory. If human will be that smart to construct a bridge to move from one, take you from one point to another, then it's done on me that the Lord will take me to my next level of glory. Amen. And that bridge is the cross of Jesus. Yes, the power of his cross take you from one level to another. The glory of his cross can move you from any point of impossibility to point of attainment. Oh Lord, help us here. That is why the preaching of the cross, to them that perish, it is foolishness. But unto us that believe is the power of God. Somebody says the power of God. Oh, shout it out somebody. What says the scripture in Colossians chapter 1 verse 20? He said, and have made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Someone say reconcile all things to himself. Yes. Look up and let's read it together. And have made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. The power of the cross. He made peace through the blood of of his cross to reconcile us unto himself. Whether those things be on earth and in heaven, whatever, wherever you need to link up to, in order to be blessed, the power of the cross can reconcile you, Amen. can connect you, Amen. can link you up. Amen. That is why God has shown you his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Your destiny cannot be trapped. Oh Lord, let me put it right. Nothing can trap my destiny. My life cannot be bewitched. There may be a gulf, a deep, a, de a great deep between me and every good thing that could prosper my life. And I'm wondering how can I get there for this purpose the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. For that purpose, I can release the power of the cross and march through. And that which should have swallowed me, I will look it under. Yeah. Because the power 
of his cross has reconciled me unto all things. He has reconciled me to all things. Someone say, by the blood, someone say, the cross of Jesus. He said, say, Jesus has made peace. Somebody better declare that really good. Say, Jesus has made peace through the blood of his cross. And by the power of the cross of Jesus, I overcome every lucky spirit. By the power of the cross of Jesus, nothing can cut good things out of my life. By the power of the cross of Jesus, I overcome every delay. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the cross of Jesus, I ascend unto my next level of greatness. By the power of the cross of Jesus, I step into my level of fulfillment. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the cross of Jesus, I rise in victory. In the name of Jesus. You receive that say amen threefold. Amen. Are there places the Lord wants to take you to? And you are seeing impossibility in every way. You see a deep pit between you and those things. Like if you make attempt to move forward, you fall and to rise, we take the grace of God. You can apply the power of the cross. Amen. Someone say, by the power of the cross of Jesus, I overcome all impossibilities. By the power of the cross of Jesus, I prevail and triumph over impossibilities. In the name of Jesus, you receive that, say yes. yes. Say amen threefold. Amen. Amen. I saw an image of trees, meaning a three-way bridge in Midland, Michigan. I've not been there, but I saw the image. I look at it, I put it aside. The Holy Spirit said, look again. A three-way bridge. The bridge crossing this way. This bridge I see, we just cross one way. Is that not so? But this bridge, it goes this way, and it goes this way. A bridge. And as the Holy Spirit said, pick it up again. I say, meaning, if you're on this side, Something good is awaiting you on the other side. And in between you is something that is difficult to just walk through. There's a bridge that can take you there. And this bridge is not just this way or that way. It's not just east and west. If what of if I'm on the other side too? So the bridge was not available for those coming from here to there or from there to here but it was also available from those coming to the other hand. So, and I begin to say, no matter where life has put me, and I feel I'm trapped, and I can't make it to the next level, the cross of Jesus has made that available. Yeah. When I saw that tree, I said, hmm. So, if the wind of life, the storms and the white wind of life shook my destiny and positioned me wrongly, the power of the cross can say, don't worry. It doesn't matter where they have positioned you. I will make a way for you. And I begin to imagine the power of the cross. On every side, Jesus shed his blood. When he stretched his hand and they named him, meaning from my, from my left to right, from east to west, from west to east, he made a bridge. You can pass over. Amen. They put a crown on his head. He shed his blood. They put nail through his leg. Even from north to south. He shed his blood. There is a way for me. Oh Lord. Amen. The eternal sacrifice. Oh, thank you for bringing that. I didn't even tell you. Look at how it looked like. Midland, Michigan. How would somebody be on that edge? and be able to get to the other side. How will somebody coming on this other side be able to get here? So from the, this bridge, you can cross and go this way. You can cross and go this way. Meaning, it does not matter 
where the wind, the storms of life, we shake you and throw you to the most desolate place on earth. And people will look at you and say, you are trapped. You are in a siege. It's a lie of the devil. Amen. The power of the cross can make a way for you. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us here. I see somebody here right now. It doesn't matter how deep down you have been. I decree the power of the cross of Jesus. Amen. As he shed his blood, yes, the blood from his hands, Amen. the blood from his head, Amen. the blood from his feet, Amen. begin to locate your destiny. Amen. From the north to the south, Amen. from the east to the west, Amen. I command recovery of your destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, recovery of my destiny. Of my destiny. Please retain the image for some time until I tell you to do otherwise. Somebody say, recover of destiny. Recover of destiny. Shout it again. Recover of Therefore, lift up your two and say, let the power of the cross of my Lord Jesus locate my life from wherever the storms of life are shaking me. From wherever the white wind has blown me away. The cross of Jesus, reconcile me again unto blessings. The cross of Jesus, reconcile me again. Reconcile unto blessings. Somebody lift up your voice. Wherever the storms has taken you, wherever the white wind has taken you, let the cross of Jesus reconcile, reconcile. Reconcile. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You see, that's why I say I process things differently. If you have been to the double decker bridge connecting New York to New Jersey, how many have passed through that? Oh, thank you. Double decker. If women can be that smart, somebody say smart, and consider the, the volume of vehicle and the number of people passing through this area in a year, there were more than 120 million vehicles passing by annually. And the traffic is always heavy. So somebody say, one bridge will not be enough. Let's make it double decker. Double decker bridge under and above. Just to ease the flow of traffic. If woman being can do that, there are a lot of delay blessings due to you that Jehovah the Most High can create multiple deckers. Oh Lord, help us. Blessings flowing from everywhere, every means. You just say, ah, Father, you did this again. Lord, you did this again. Ah, uh -uh, I didn't expect that this is coming. This is everything. In a besieged city, the Lord showed me his marvelous kindness. Somebody is receiving the bridge. It's not coming. I see it happening. We are in a right season for the flow of miracle. I see multiple decades of bridges for inflow of blessings. Where the enemy has limited you. Places they have said there is no way forward. Where you feel trapped. Where you feel besieged. Where places have been cut off. Where you have been isolated. Where helpers have been arrested. Where good things cannot flow. I decree the cross of Jesus as a bridge. I decree the cross of Jesus as a bridge to bring in an inflow of blessings into your life. I decree the cross of Jesus, the cross of Jesus, the cross of Jesus, bring him an inflow of blessings into your life. Now, in the name of Jesus, somebody lift up your two hands and say, let the cross of Jesus. Oh, you better shout it loud. An inflow of multiple blessings into my life. Oh yes, declare that. An inflow, an inflow. Let the cross of Jesus 
bring an inflow of multiple blessings into my life. In Jesus' name. Listen. In a besieged city, the enemy wants to cut you off, isolate you, arrest the helpers, and good things from coming. Out of the flow of essential things in your life. And that's what you call besieging. But Sammy said, this was their intention. To cut me off. To be sure nothing good comes into my life. But the, in the midst of this, the Lord showed me his marvelous kindness. Yeah. At first, I panicked. At first, I was terrified. At first, I was about to give up. Why? Because of their projector weapons that I used to break down my defenses. But suddenly, the Lord said, I will help you. Do you feel trapped? Do you feel, where else can I turn to? The cross of Jesus is that bridge for you. Yeah. Mankind can devise, me, can devise bridge from different, loca different locations. The Lord can locate you where you are. Yeah. If mankind can devise multiple decker bridge, the, uh, the cross of Jesus can give you multiple flow of blessings. Yeah. You receive that multiple flow of blessings, say yes. yes. Somebody shout, I receive multiple flow of blessings. Somebody say the cross of Jesus, the cross of Jesus has given me multiple flow of blessings. Multiple you receive that, say yes. yes. Back to Kim James Version of that same translation. It says, it shows you multiple kindness. King James Version. So read it out loud, everybody. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Some marvelous kindness. Marvelous kindness. I love that choice of word and the implications. Marvelous. Somebody say marvelous. marvelous. I love the Hebrew meaning of that, which means add to believe. Say that with me, somebody. Oh, say it out loud. The Hebrew translation says that God showed me some good things that were hard to believe. When I was trapped and in a siege, how the Lord rescued me by the power of his cross. If somebody will say, I will escape tragedy, I'll say it will be hard. If somebody say, the weapons of the enemy will not destroy me, I say, <clears throat> it will take the grace of God. The way the enemy is boasting by day, by noon, by night, the way they are showcasing their weapons to terrify you, if somebody will say, this one is a disaster and a great causer, just like Balak said of Baal, he said, so every you cause is cost. Whoever you bless is blessed. Such a blessing, it will be difficult to be your enemy. Yet, that was the enemy the people of God were facing. But he wanted to curse. But that day, a spirit man went on suspension. Because the Lord stepped in. I don't know what the enemy is using as a rage against you. I see divine intervention taking place right now. In such a way that you will look around, it will be difficult to believe. Amen. For yourself and to everybody. Glory Even Lord. yourself will marvel, say, this is marvelous. Amen. The Lord did this. Amen. Somebody say, marvelous kindness. marvelous kindness. And kindness there, it talks of sympathetic affection. Say that with me. Sympathetic. <laughs> Louder, somebody. Say, May God show sympathy on you. Yeah. In crying out to people that will yet be mean to you and be difficult to your life. May you learn to cry unto God Amen. and receive. Amen. May you learn how to cry unto God so that one tear, one drop of tears will not go by Amen. without the heavens responding. Amen. Somebody say, I receive Pathetic affection from the throne of grace. Oh, if I were you, you would make it a desperate prayer. Who are those ready for such a, now? Say, from the throne of grace and mercy, 
I receive sympathetic affection. In the name of Jesus, oh, somebody better cry it out. From the throne of grace and mercy. In the name of Jesus, I receive sympathetic affection. Amen. Oh, Lord. Anything that wants to weary you at the point of breaking through, I bind it and I cast it out. In Jesus' name. What's the point when you are in place of prayer? Something muzzles you. But when you want to shout and yell because of pains, you can yell it at the rooftop. I bind that attack and cast it out of your life. Therefore, lift up your voice and say, from the throne of grace and mercy, I receive sympathetic affection in the name of Jesus from the throne of grace and mercy I did come all of it sympathetic affection yes receive it receive it aha in Jesus name we pray lift up your voice therefore and proclaim this blessed be the Lord for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Somebody said, Jehovah has shown me his marvelous. Marvelous kindness. Glorious things. Too hard to believe. His sympathetic affection has brought me out of trouble. His sympathetic affection has brought me out of crisis. His sympathetic affection has brought me out of affliction. His sympathetic affection has brought me out of lack. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord show you sympathy. Amen. May his affection be lavish upon your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the days of Ezekiah, the, as soon as he ascended the throne, at that time, the nation of Israel had been divided into two, the northern part constituting the ten tribes, and then the two other tribes constituting Judah. And Ezekiah, the king of Judah, witnessed something. The Assyrians came and besieged the northern part. Three years. How many years? And they, were, they kept bombarding. Cut off help. Cut off every good thing out of the land of Israel until they surrendered. And when they surrendered, the Assyrians moved in and took everybody out of the land, relocated them, and brought in new people. That's why they called them the Samarians. Ezekiah was watching. Well, that was to the, the northern part. They are not coming here. The moment they were done with that exercise, they now turned towards Ezekiah. To besiege him. They did not only besiege. They were boasting. Of nations. They had brought to wretchedness. Of great kings. They had wasted. Of palaces and thrones. They have blasted asunder. They began to boast of gods. Of nations. That they burnt and consumed. They began to boast of the idols. They have captured. And they say. Ezekiah. It's your turn. We are ready to besiege you. We have done it to many nations. This will not be an exception. Greater nations than you, we brought them down. They were set to besiege the land of Judah. Could that be your own experience? You've watched others go through, you watch people going through suffering, difficult times. And oftentimes, it's easy for us to apportion blame and try to see them as they are not good enough. Try to see them as maybe that's their problem. 
And suddenly, those who had judged others, their own time now came. And Ezekiah was watching. What shall we do in the midst of this siege? The enemy specializes in taking turns from one person to another. But if they come towards you, the rock of ages will appear. Amen. He made a mistake unknown that Judah means praise. Somebody say praise. praise. And he was trying to besiege praise. Listen. A life that is full of praise can never suffer besiege. Amen. I say that again. A life full of praise can never suffer besiege. Amen. It is not, I'm not talking of religious praise. I'm not talking of just singing. I'm talking of a life as an offering before the Lord as a sweet smelling servo. A life that has been separated, consecrated unto the Lord. For God to, de to derive pleasure in you. Amen. So that anywhere you go, the praise of the Lord springs forth in your life. Amen. When Assyrian turned against Judah, they made the, the worst case of their life. But they never knew the way God would do it. When the Assyrian turned against them, when they had their boasting, their curses, their blaspheming, to ridicule the Holy One of Israel. Those who had the boasting and the blasphemy of the Assyrians, they tore their dresses in reproach. To the point that when Ezekiah had it, he said, this is a day of trouble, a day of rebuke, and a day of reproach, and a day of blasphemy. Any day, that's, any, any reproach that have been programmed into your day is abolished by the blood of Jesus. Reproach program into your day is abolished by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Trouble program into your day is abolished by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, somebody better lift up your voice. This is no joke. Somebody say, reproach program into my day. You better double that aggression. You better say it with all assurance. Reproach program into my day. Be abolished by the blood of Jesus. Be canceled. Be terminated, be overthrown to desolations in the name of Jesus. And everyone says, somebody say, trouble program into my day. Be abolished by the blood of Jesus. Be terminated by the blood of Jesus. Overthrown and you are cast out to desolations in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my day is filled with blessing. My day is filled with joy. My day is filled with peace. My day is filled with favor. My day is filled with rejoicing. Decree over what you want over your day. In Jesus' name. Listen. The enemy may be taking turn, moving from one house to another. It won't get to your house. That is what the blood of the Passover is for. To repel any evil to repel their trafficking upon you and your household. The enemy thought he can take turn and say, it's your turn, oh, Ezekiah, Judah. But he made the greatest regret of his life. He terrified them. Do not be intimidated by, their, by the way they want to terrify you because the Holy One of Israel shall be for you. In the midst of this, Ezekiah made a profound prayer. I want us to pray prayer of Ezekiah and watch the same God who is still alive today that akin to the voice of Ezekiah that fought his battle. What, what, what was the prayer of Ezekiah? I love biblical prayers because they've been tested and proved to overcome all limitations and hindrances and blockages. The same prayer, the spirit that brought it to manifestation is still alive today. Are you ready for that right now? When Ezekiah was besieged, and he said, in his mind, it was like, you besiege Israel, the northern part, for three years. I don't have to wait that long on that satanic bewitchment. I don't have to be that long on that satanic besieging. The time to terminate that besieging is now. Amen. And the same God who answered is still alive. What says the scripture in 2 Kings 
chapter 19, verses 15 and 16. I want us to carefully declare this prayer of Ezekiah that ended the siege of his life. Somebody's siege is being terminated right now. Yeah. Oh, yes. Those who believe that no matter how long you have been besieged, from conception, there could be a generation besieging over your entire family. Freedom is established right now. Yeah. There could be a territorial besieging over your life. It's canceled and terminated right now. Yeah. I don't know those who have vowed to monitor, to network, to surround, and to afflict. This day, they have been overthrown to desolation. Yeah. Ezekiel said, the siege of Israel lasted three years. My own doesn't have to wait that long. I don't know how long you feel trapped. It can be terminated once and for all. Yeah. Oh, yes, it can be terminated right now. Yeah. To those who believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, this is your mind. Yeah. To those who believe that you are moving out of this place, triumphing because the Lord has shown you his marvelous kindness yeah. in a busy city. Yeah. Therefore, declare the prayer of Ezekiah. And Ezekiah prayed. Amen. If Ezekiah were to pray like this, hmm, only God will help. And Ezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O oh Lord God of Israel, which dwell between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down your ear and hear. Open, Lord, your ear, eyes, and see, and hear the word of Zenichalem, which has sent him. To reproach the living God. Now listen, we are going to personalize it. See how I'm going to do it. And David Komolafe prayed before the Lord. You put in your name. Amen? Amen. The other part, the from Sen from the from Senekareb there. He said, and hear the words of my adversaries. Someone say, and hear the words of my adversaries which they have sent to reproach the living God. And hear the words of my adversaries, which are sent to reproach the living God. Are you therefore ready? Yes. Lift up your two hands. Eternal Father, as you are Ezekiah in his days, in the midst of his besieging, in the midst of the blasphemy and trouble, you, you step into his situation. Shatter the besieging. You gave him victory. Our only one of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even in your mercy. Confirm this prayer with signs and wonders and miraculous, marvelous wonders in our lives also. In the name of Jesus. The special angels that work with King Ezekiel in those days. Be quickly by the Holy Spirit and begin to work on our behalf. In Jesus' name, the life and the authority of this world that walk with a kaya, this unshaking written word of God, as we proclaim it, bring forth testimony, signs, and wonders into our life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Therefore, lift up your voice and decree. And David Kamalafe prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubs, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the head, thou hast made heaven and head. Lord, bow down your ears and hear me. Open, Lord, thy head and see, and hear the word of David, of my adversaries, which they have sent to reproach the living God. Shout it loud again. And David Kamalave prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, we dwell between the cherubs. Thou art God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made the heavens and the earth. Lord, bow down your ear and hear. Open, Lord, the eye and see. And hear the words of my adversaries, which they have set to reproach the living God. Shout it loud again. And David Kamalave prayed before the Lord. Oh, and said, Oh Lord God of Israel, we dwell between the cherubs. Thou art God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the head. 
Thou hast made heaven and heart. Lord, bow thy ear and hear. Open, Lord, your ear and see. And hear the words of my adversaries. We have sent to reproach the living Lord. Somebody double that aggression again. And David come and have prayed before the Lord and said, O oh Lord God of Israel, we dwell between the shadows. Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and heart. Lord, bow down your hair and hear. Open, Lord, your hair and see. And hear the words of my verses, which they have sent to reproach the living God. Somebody shout it louder. And David, come and have prayed before the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, we dwell between the shadows. Thou art God. Even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. Lord, bow down thy hair and hear. Open, Lord, thy hair and see. And hear the words of my verses. We they have sent to reproach the living God. Somebody shout it again. And David, come and laugh it. Pray before the Lord and say, O oh Lord God of Israel, we dwell between the cherubs and the God. Even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made the heaven and the heart. Lord, bow down your ear and hear. Open down their heart and see. And hear the words of my verses, which they are sent to reproach the living God. Shout it again. I, David, Tamalafe, prayed before the Lord and said, O oh Lord God of Israel, we dwell between the shadows. Thou art God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made it. heaven and heart. Lord, bow down your ear and hear. Open down your ear and see. And hear the words of Sherik and my adversaries with their sent to the cross of the God. Lift up your voice and begin to worship. The Lord is showing you his marvelous kindness in a besieged city. The Lord is showing you his marvelous kindness in a besieged city. You believe you are free from that besieging. Shout yes. Yes. You believe you are seeing the amazing grace, amazing love of God to rescue you from besieging. Say yes. Yes. You believe those who besiege you, they are scattered. Say yes. Yes. You believe the earth, they cut off from you, you have received. Say yes. Yes. You believe by his amazing, marvelous kindness, blessings begin to flow into your life. Amen. If you believe that, just begin to worship. Just begin to worship. Amazing Lord, how can it be that thou, my God, God, should die for me? Amazing Lord, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? The Lord has shown you his marvelous kindness in a besieged city. Can somebody just worship him? You are experiencing that marvelous kindness even right now. Somebody is experiencing that marvelous kindness. Just worship. Amazing love. Marvelous kindness in a besieged city. Lift up your voice because I can see a flow of divine blessings in your life. You believe that? Shout amen threefold. Amen, amen, amen. 
chains fell off my heart was
He can move the mountains. My God is mighty.
The siege is scattered. The siege is broken. The siege is scattered. Amen. When Ezekiah prayed, what was the divine response? Somebody is getting divine response to your prayer right now. Yeah. One more time, let's make that prayer of Ezekiah to scatter the siege and their boasting and their blasphemy, asking where is God? Lift up your voice, look up and read. Let's declare this two times. And David come and have prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubs, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the heart, thou hast made heaven and heart. Lord, bow down your hair and hear. Open, Lord, your ears and see. And hear the words of my adversaries, which you have sent to reproach the living God. One more time out loud. And David come and have prayed unto the Lord God of Israel, saying, O God, thou art God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubs, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the heart, thou hast made heaven and heart. Lord, bow down your ears and hear. Open, Lord, your ears and see. And hear the words of my verses, which they have sent to reproach the living God. And verses 32, 33, 34. What was the divine response? Read out. Therefore, Thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same way he returned, and shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Lord said, you will not experience any siege. The siege other nations for multiple years and wasted them. But the Lord said, they won't even come. They won't fire and harrow. They won't block your helpers. They won't stop the flow of blessing. By the same multiple way they came, by so shall they return. Amen. By the authority of this eternal word of God, Amen. I decree to your life, Amen. you will not experience the siege of the wicked. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will not encounter the siege of iniquity. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. affliction will not encompass you. Amen. Disaster will not encompass you. Amen. By the cross of Jesus, escape the siege. Amen. By the blood is shed on his cross, Amen. escape the siege. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. somebody say the siege is over. Siege is over. Somebody say I overcome the siege. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you believe that shout Amen threefold. Amen. 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 Therefore, you will decree the same. Read verse thirty-two. Therefore, thus says the Lord God concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor set a bank. Somebody say, as the Lord God of Israel lives, and as his spirit lives, evil shall not come into my life. Affliction shall not come into my life. Death and tragedy shall not come into my life. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Say, by divine command, no weapon of the enemy shall have hold over my life. In the name of Jesus, the siege is scattered and I escape. In Jesus' name. The next verse, verse 33, read. By the way that he came, by the same he shall return and shall not come into this city, says the Lord. Whatever affliction, whatever trouble set against you, by the same way, from, their, from the same source they come, they will return there. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now the verse 34, he said, For I will defend this city to save it for my own name's sake and for my servant's sake. Say, For your own name's sake, thou only one of Israel. Somebody better cry it out loud. For your own name's sake, thou holy one of Israel, defend my life to save it. Defend my life 
to save it in the name of Jesus. For your own name's sake, thou Holy One of Israel, defend my life to save it. Defend it, defend it, defend it. Hey, for your own name's sake, thou Holy One of Israel, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, defend this gathering, O oh Lord, to save it for your own name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. God has shown you his marvelous kindness in a besieged city. You believe that? Lift up your voice and begin to give thanks to God for victory. Somebody shout victory and worship. Worship the Lord. He has shown you his marvelous kindness in a besieged city. Just worship and give God a wave of faith. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.